Well, we're just a few hours away from the premiere of the third installment of this franchise. Let's go back to the beginning as I bring to you a re-review of Guardians of the Galaxy. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Nuff said. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers and true believers out there. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a re-review of the 2014 superhero flick, Guardians of the Galaxy, released by Disney through Marvel Studios. This is the 10th film in the MCU, directed by James Gunn, who wrote the screenplay with Nicole Perlman, featuring an ensemble cast including Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, along with the voices of Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper as the titular characters, along with Lee Pace, Michael Rooker, Karen Gillan, Jamon Hunsu, John C. Riley, Glenn Close, and Benicio Del Toro. Anyway, the focus is on Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, and a group of extraterrestrial criminals go on the run after stealing a powerful artifact. This film ended up being a real sleeper hit when it got released on August 1st, 2014. Now, it premiered just a, few, a couple weeks before this at, well, at, no wait, a week and a half before it's at the Dolby Theater. Anyway, this was such a, an unexpected success. Anyway, it would be so, so big. Even though people might not have heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but when this film came out, it really became a big one. In 1988, following his mother's death, a young Pierre Quill is abducted from Earth by a group of alien thieves and smugglers called the Ravagers, led by Yondu Udanta. In 2014, on the abandoned planet Morag, Quill steals a mysterious orb, but is attacked by the by forces of the fanatical Kree renegade Ronan the Accuser, led by Korath. Although Quill escapes with the orb, Yondu discovers his theft and issues a bounty for his capture, while Ronan sends the assassin Gamora after the orb. When Quill attempts to sell the orb to Xandar, capital of the Nova Empire, Gamora ambushes him and steals it. A fight ensues, drawing in a pair of bounty hunters. The genetically and cybernetically modified raccoon Rocket and the tree-like humanoid Groot. Nova Corps officers capture the four, detain them in the Kylan prison. An inmate there, Drax the Destroyer, attempts to kill Gamora due to her association with Ronan, who killed his wife and daughter. Quill convinces Drax that Gamora can bring Ronan to him, though Gamora reveals that she has betrayed Ronan, unwilling to let him use the orb's power. Learning that Gamora intends to sell the orb to the Collector, Tanelaer Taven, Quill, Rocket, Groot, and Drax work with her to escape the Kylan in Quill's ship, the Milano. Ronan meets with Gamora's adopted father, Thanos, to discuss her betrayal. Quill's group flees to nowhere, that's with a K N O W H E R E, a remote lawless outpost in space built in the giant severed head of a celestial. A drunken Drax summons Ronan while the rest of the group meets Tyvon. He opens the orb, revealing the Power Stone, an item of immeasurable power that destroys all but the most powerful beings who wield it. Tyvon's slave Karina grabs the stone, triggering an explosion that engulfs Tyvon's collection. Ronan arrives and easily defeats Drax, while the others flee by ship, pursued by Ronan's followers and Gamora's adoptive sister, Nebula. Nebula destroys Gamora's ship, leaving her flowing in space, and Ronan's fires capture the orb. Quill contacts Yondu before following Gamora into space, giving her his helmet to survive. Yondu arrives and retrieves the pair. 
Rocket, Drax, and Groot drain to attack Yondu's ship to rescue them, but Quill negotiates a truce, promising the orb to Yondu. Quill's group agrees that facing Ronin means certain death, but that they cannot let him use the Infinity Stone to destroy the galaxy. On Ronin's flagship, the Dark Aster, Ronin embeds the stone in his Warhammer, taking its power for himself. He contacts Thanos, threatening to kill him after first destroying Xandar. Hateful of her adopted father, Nebula allies with Ronin. Alright, now for the final act in the inning. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below as I count down. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. The Ravagers and Quill's group... Join with the Nova Corp to confront the Dark Aster at Xandar. With Quill's group breaching the warship with the Malal, Ronin uses his empowered Warhammer to destroy the Nova Corp fleet. Drax kills Korath and Gamora defeats Nebula, who escapes, but the group finds themselves outmatched by Ronin's power until Rocket crashes a Ravager ship through the Dark Aster. The damaged Dark Aster crash lands on Xandar, with Groot sacrificing himself to shield the group. Ronin emerges from the wreck and prepares to destroy Xandar, but Quill distracts him, allowing Drax and Rocket to destroy Ronin's Warhammer. Quill grabs the Freed Stone and, with Gamora, Drax, and Rocket sharing its burden, uses it to vaporize Ronin. In the aftermath, Quill tricks Yondu into taking a container supposedly containing the stone and gives the real one to the Nova Corp. As the Ravagers leave Xanar, Yondu remarks that it turned out well that they did not deliver Quill to his father per their contract. Quill's group, now known as the Guardians of the Galaxy, has their criminal records expunged. And Quill learns that he is only half-human, his father being part of an ancient unknown species. Quill finally opens the last present he received from his father. Well, not father, his mother. Oops, sorry. My mistake. A cassette tape filled with her favorite songs. The Guardians leave in the rebuilt Milano, along with a pod sapling cut from Groot, which grows into a baby version of him. In a, in a mid credit scene. In a post credit scene, Tyvan sits in his destroyed archive with two of his living exhibits, a canine cosmonaut and an anthropomorphic duck. How are the duck days? End of story. So what did I think of Guardians of the Galaxy? I gotta say, this was an absolute blast from start to finish. I really enjoyed it for what it had to offer. Now, first up, I gotta give credit to Tyler Bates who did the score for the film. That was really, really something. And of course, um, the songs you hear on there that would that features sixties and seventies, which you heard on um, you might have heard in the trailers. You heard the "Hooked on a Feeling" by Blue Suede on there, and of course there was um, Red Bones. Come and get your love, which you hear at the opening sequence. Now, um, according to um, Mr. Gunn, he said that the opening scenes were designed with Hooked on Feeling in mind, but once he discovered Come and Get Your Love, the song used in the sequence, he, he felt it was a bare fit. Now, I will agree, uh, uh, but at this point, I or those could have done that. Yep. The soundtrack actually reached number one on the Billboard chart. Which that was really some which was really some featuring all sorts of great songs. I don't have it, but I do know it has a lot of them. Anyway, the film was a commercial success and critical success too. The film went on to make seven hundred and seventy three million worldwide and became the third highest grossing film. A 2014, right behind The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, and Transformers Age of Extinction. Despite that, got heavily dissed. And I am planning to review the Transformers films later on next month. Anyway, critics praise it for just about everything. The screenplay, direction, acting, humor, soundtrack, visual effects, and action sequences. 
It was nominated for two awards at the Academy Awards and received numerous other accolades. So apparently, it ended up being such a big, big success. It was also the top grossing film of, two, of the summer of 2014. Now, currently, it's set to 92% on Ron Tomeo's Certified Fresh. They say the film is just as irreverent as fans of the frequently zany Marvel comic would expect, as well as funny, thrilling, full of heart, and packed with visual splendor. I could have said that better myself. Variety said James Gunn's presumptive franchise star is overwhelmed, overstuffed, and sometimes too eager to please, but the cheeky comic tone keeps things buoyant, as does Chris Pratt's wing performance. Definitely, uh, the Hollywood Reporter said it's a well-matched well, well -matched ensemble rises to the challenge a launch a heroic origin film with distinctive style, abundant thrills, and no shortage of humor. Yes, I couldn't have said it better myself. Like I said, this film was, wow, an unexpected success. I, although I never knew much of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but after seeing the, the trailer for the film, I knew I wanted to check it out, since I'd seen every other film in the MCU so far at that point. So, when I saw it, I was blown by it. I loved it. Now, as for our cast, we have Chris Pratt playing Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord. I will say he's really, really something. Now, according to Pratt, he said that his, that his character is a mix of Han Solo from Star Wars and Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Which reminds me, speaking of Star Wars, today, of course, is May the 4th be with you. <laughs> now, of course, Pratt was already best known for playing Indy Dwyer on TV's Parks and Recreation at the time. Initially turned down the role, he had lost weight to portray fit characters in films like Moneyball and Zero Dark Thirty. And had given up ambitions to play the lead role in fi action films after humbling auditions for Star Trek and even Avatar. But soon, he managed to, um, get the part. Zoe Saldana, who, of course, was in the in Star Trek, played Gamora. I'm going to say she's definitely really good. Now, she said that she became the character through makeup rather than computer-generated imagery or performance capture. Definitely. Oh, yeah, and she's also, she was also an avatar as well. Anyway, she did a great job on that character. Next, Dave Batista plays Drax the Destroyer. And I gotta say, he is so awesome. Yeah. Now, of course, his skin tone was changed from the bright green in the comics to a muddier gray to avoid visual similarities to a certain hulking green character of Marvel's that had already been on the screen twice. Voicing, now, we have the voice of Vin Diesel as Groot. Yeah. And I gotta say, he did such an exceptionally good job. Even though he says, I am Groot every time, but I don't care. I mean, he did pretty good. Uh, after all, this wasn't the first time he did voice acting. I mean, The Iron Giant was the only film I knew of his that he did voice acting work on. But this one just took the cake. I gotta say, it was really something. Bradley Cooper voices Rocket. And let me tell you, this is... Wow. This is a furry career with lots of spunk and attitude and what have you. Uh, and he's a little crazy at times, but I like him. Lee Pace plays Ronan the Accuser. Really good villain. Michael Rooker plays Yondu. It's pretty good. Karen Gillan does Nebula. She's good. Jamar Hansu plays Korath. John C. Riley played Roman Day, a corpseman. 
a Corpman in the Nova Corp. And Glenn Close played the Nova Corp leader, Arani Rail. And Benicio Del Toro played Tivin, Tivin the Collector. Josh Brolin appears, so uncredited as Thanos, through voice acting and performance capture. And of course, we get a cameo by Stan Lee. Yeah, and there's lots of others, including director James Gunn himself and Nathan Fillion, even Rob Zombie doing the voice of a Ravager Navigator. Um, Tyler Bates, the composer of the film, was a Ravager pilot. And Seth Green, who of course was voicing um, sing Chris on Family Guy, uh, Chris Griffin, that is. <laughs> Voiced Howard the Duck. I was surprised to see this character. Actually, they kind of got the character a wee bit right than what we saw in the cult classic 1986 film that I know everybody didn't like. But overall, I gotta say, with a great cast, a great story, which I liked, great direction from James Gunn, a great score from Tyler Bates, and a great soundtrack, and... And a great cast and great characters. This movie is awesome. So overall, would I recommend Guardians of the Galaxy? The answer is hell yeah. Definitely. Definitely give this a watch. It is streaming on Disney+. Plus. You can also get on physical media if you'd like to as well. So what did you think of Guardians of the Galaxy? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a re-review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yes, this film was so successful, it would have two sequels. One's coming up this weekend. So stay tuned for my re-review of Volume 2. And if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other films in the MCU. In the upper left-hand corner is my re-review of Iron Man. The upper right-hand corner is my re-review of Thor Ragnarok from 2017. Or if you'd like some more Chris Pratt, and, and check out my spoiler-free review of his recent hit, the Super Mario Bros. movie, Ray Voice Mario. In the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, true believers, I'm the Big D saying, see ya and Excelsior!